All right, Chris and Dan show. Look, we're still going to do music. We're still going to do podcasts where we rant about whatever the hell we want to rant about for a while. Um, we'll get that's Chris's job to get us more organized as far as staying on track because it's not, on, I can't do or, that well. On topic. Yeah, but I had a good idea. There's this channel. Shout out. Fucking, I can't give a shout out if I forgot the name of the channel, but I follow, I subscribe to this dude. It's basically like makes fun of like these gurus, like self help gurus. And you know, Chris, Tony Robbins would be a good example. Well, yeah, you clicked on it, so you know we're about to do Tony <laughs> Robbins, but we're about to do a series of this stuff because I think it's kind of cool. There are certain people, there's a place for motivation, there's a time and a place. And I've learned from my experience, Chris and I are both entrepreneurs, business owners for decades. There is a time and place for motivation, but there's also a time and place to actually do the work and not be motivated. Actually, that should be the majority of your time. The motivation should just be like the catalyst to get the reaction going. And to me, my motivator was Gary Vaynerchuk. That's why I started my YouTube channel in 2010, which changed my career but i actually stopped watching him like five years into it because i i don't need it and we have some friends who are into this tony robbins dude quite honestly i have one of his books and i really like it the reason i like it though is because (laughs) he's just like the curator he's not really the author it's his health book life force um, so he has Peter Diamantis and a few other doctors that scientists that get it really deep into like some science stuff. And Tony Robbins more like the curator. He's like, he does the intro and the conclusion. And when we got to the conclusion, I stopped listening cause it's just him like trying to motivate you about health. So I understand if it helps people, but there also is like taking advantage of people. And I don't know. I'm not necessarily accusing him of of that. I've never been to one of his things. Personally. Can you stop? Can you stop right there for a moment? I'll stop right here. Yeah, because I could keep Cause, going on forever. Be, well, I just want to say something to that. So, yeah. really, anybody who puts out a self help product, I mean, their fallback is, well, of course, it's not going to help everybody. It's up to the the individual, the user, right. to apply what I'm telling them. Right. right? And if they don't then yeah, you could say that I'm ripping people off because that particular individual didn't do as I instructed or what I instructed didn't work for them, Yeah, which that could be any product, right? It's not just these, these like Tony Robbins, these self-help people. It could be a medication. It could be uh, a diet. Right. Yeah. Maybe you did apply it. It just doesn't work for you. Yeah. Which there could be some truth to that. Right. Or it could be the other. Right. You, you, you took it, you did the program and you didn't apply it correctly. Right. So there's both of those fallback positions for almost anything or for anybody. Right. So any product or any product that's meant for the individual. Right. Yeah. Wouldn't you agree? There's those no, two fallback yeah. positions. Of course. It's like a perfect thing to do. And I think Tony Robbins would say he's doing good. And who knows? Ultimately, like, he's probably is net doing good like, for mm-hmm. the society because um, his messages are positive. But there are, he's got a certain segment of his fan base that pays for anything he releases. And that's how he monetizes, and I'm not knocking it, but... What is Tony Robbins worth, do you know? Let's Google it. What that's do you think? What that's what I'm doing what right do you now. think before you find out? Okay, I would guess somewhere between 50 and 100 million. Basically, he's been doing this for decades. All right, so I have it. I have something here. 600 million. Holy crap, was I wrong. <laughs> <laughs> he makes fifty million a year on average. Yeah. Wow! So that just shows million. you. So that shows you what the market. I mean, what what again, did he make his money from though? Primarily, well, is it from self help? Kind of yeah. Well, he's one of the he's the one of the original self help gurus and probably 
the best one. And again, the message is great, but you got to question yourself as somebody who's constantly buying these things but not doing anything with it. Like, I don't know how you feel about that, but we both know people that are into this stuff. Sure. And another argument to this is if you're genuine, right? If you're genuine that you're doing this to help people, do you need, should you make 600 million off of it? Right. So Buddha, right. He said, I'm not a God and I, I just want to help people. And he wasn't doing it necessarily for money. Yeah. So I, I don't, I don't, I don't know a lot about Buddha. I do know he said, I'm not a God, right. Don't treat me as yeah. a God. Yeah. Um, it was more like a Tony Robbins, really, Buddha, right? To my understanding. Yeah, yeah. So well, he didn't want to make money by kind of by that statement. He, he was saying, you're treating me as I'm a god and I'm not. So don't quit tr doing that, right? right. So um, my guess is he, he wasn't looking to make money or anything. He was legitimately just wanting to help people. So Yeah, that's what he, Tony Robbins says, yeah. So, but he, the business up created itself. So, is it okay if you're legitimately just wanting to help people? Is it okay to make yes. money off of that? Yes. I is it okay? Exactly. Is it okay though to be super duper wealthy? Which I would consider, if you're worth yes. six hundred, if you're worth a half a billion or more, you're very wealthy. Right? It's okay. It's Here's okay. my problem: is not with him. Okay. And what some of these guys will react to, my problem is with them. With him, my problem is not with him. It's with his core base that just keeps paying for his stuff. And yes, there are a few examples of like people who are his core fans, like making multi millions a year based on his strategies or his motivations and things. But the vast majority are putting this on their credit cards, and it's like year over year, they're just looking for the next thing. So it's not even my problem with him because he is teaching i mean i've watched his videos i've watched his documentary he's pushing positive messages mm -hmm. um we'll get into others like andrew tate where it's like somewhat questionable but that's not this video sure. my, my boy gary vaynerchuk he wasn't selling anything he doesn't have any masterminds doesn't do any of that stuff he has a uh, marketing firm he sells wine online so he has other businesses he's kind of like us where we make videos, well, I make videos on my channel, but we have businesses, we have other businesses as well. We don't have like motivational classes or, uh, we have courses, but it's actual like hard skills. To, yeah, that's to entirely different. Theory. This is why I like Gary Vaynerchuk. He said, yeah, Gary Vaynerchuk actually said, I want you to use my videos to get inspired and then don't watch me ever again because you're going to mm -hmm. be too busy working on your business. Mm -hmm. And he knows that there's always going to be an influx of people coming and he also knows the majority won't and then if he has a book it's instant new york times bestseller list and all that stuff so which i would say our conference is more probably akin to as well in which hey use it learn from it apply it and you don't need us again right mm, if people make relationships and they look for have something to look forward to every year i don't know because i think there's something that's Lacking in the industry where it's like genuine. Okay. Then now you're now you're even more following in Tony Robbins' footsteps. Then if that's maybe the case, like fostering collaboration. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and maybe I mean, I still say no, but maybe because the purpose of Tony Robbins' seminars is to monetize it for himself. You know, that's that's the business for us. The business is to pay for itself, really. And if there's any extra profits to be made, it's from the sponsorships. Mm -hmm. But anyways, let's watch this. I actually haven't seen this, but, but it's I something just, to get people pumped for 2023. I just want to make sure, because I don't think anybody's probably going to watch this video that's going to be going to our conference. But what I'm saying is we're not exactly like Tony Robbins. I'm just saying we're kind of following in those footsteps is all I'm saying. Nah, that's an insult. That's no, uh, it's not to say we're charging the same initially. We're not looking to monetize the individual. We are looking to help the individual. And I think Tony Robbins did the same initially. Or do you think he was just trying to cut throats and make money? I don't know what he was trying to do, honestly. Well, what would be your guess from the end result? Is he just looking to make money off of... I mean, 
he's a good guy that can convey a message that might benefit some people, but ultimately he's, he's just trying all to make about money. Grow, he's just okay. trying to make money. Yeah, he's trying to grow his business. Okay. Well, that's not what we're doing, of course. But it, but nonetheless, it kind of looks similar from the onset. On the surface, yeah. Yeah. You always have to like look deep into yourself, like, why do I need this? Mm -hmm. Who are these people? What are they trying to do? Um, but here it is. I've never seen this, but two minutes, 24 seconds. This is the 2023. How to thrive in 2023. Let's see. It's right. starting with like scaring. You see, I haven't even played it, but it's like looks smoke and fire. I see fearful. Like yeah. fear is a big motivator. So let's see. And then we'll sure. pause here and there. There's a lot of things happening in the outside world right now that you and I can't control. And here's where the power is. So we master our inner world. We can easily master the outer world. It's not the strongest that survives. It's the most adaptable. What does it really mean to be unshakable? It's not just a matter of money. It's a state of mind. When you're truly unshakable, you have an unwavering confidence amidst the storm. You don't allow fear to take you over. If you're knocked off balance, you find your center quickly and retain your inner calm. This state of mind allows you to be a leader, not a follower. To be the chess player, not the chess piece. To be one of the few who do, not the many who do. All right, let's stop for a moment. So I'm thinking what he said at the beginning. It's not the strongest that survive. It's the most, most adaptable. adaptable. And yes, there's certainly that's certainly true to a degree. But guess what? I I kind of disagree with that too because I think if it's the strongest that can adapt that do the best, right? If if right if if you're at the if you're at the top, it's just easier for you to adapt, right? Which is essentially what you're saying. If if you're Microsoft or you're Tesla, right? Mm. You're the strongest. Yeah. Or you're Google. You know and, what? And you can adapt. I but think you are that already and in a position. Is hard. That last and is hard. There's a book called Innovator's Dilemma, mm -hmm. which explores this point where what you did to get you there to be strong mm -hmm. and to be the dominant player mm -hmm. is exactly the opposite of what you need to do to adapt. Because once you reach a, a, a place of strength, you worry about yeah. defending your place. Sure, it becomes more difficult to adapt. Sorry, and it goes counter. You. It goes, yeah, it goes counterintuitive to what got you there in the first place. So what usually ends up happening is a new entrant comes in and does kind of what you did, but for a different vertical. And you're too busy monetizing because you're dominating. So you're monetizing your previous vertical and letting others do the necessary hard work and investment into a new vertical. I think Amazon does this well. I do think Google does this well. Um, Tesla well, there, remains to be seen, but sure, there's a there's, few that do it well. Agreed. And, and there's examples of both, right? Where the strong adapt and where the strong don't adapt. Like MySpace would be a perfect example of this, right? Mm -hmm. um, in which they didn't adapt and they were overcome by Facebook, right? And I think Facebook is also going to run the same course as MySpace, but at a slower, well, pace. <laughs> right this is tr facebook's trying to do virtual reality so that's right like they're, they're trying to adapt future. yeah they're trying to adapt um I, I honestly don't think they'll succeed i think something else will overthrow facebook but google i think is just so powerful it'd be very difficult to overthrow them right? same with amazon them. amazon's yeah. getting into everything health right. right now right so they're adapting mm-hmm Right, mm -hmm. so there's examples of both where the strong just become stronger, yeah, and where the strong just don't adapt at all and are overcome. And it's funny we paused it on a random thing, but this looks like somebody at church, you know. This is like Robin's become like a religious figure of sorts. Yeah, that's kind of scary. I mean, look if at that. True. I wouldn't know if this was a church ad well, or uh, Robin's uh, event. But uh, is this at one of his seminars? I mean, is this dude at one of his seminars? I mean, that's what you would. I would think, think. so. The guy behind him is assuming. wearing 
the guy behind him wearing a Tony Robbins hat. Is it? You, think, okay. you think Tony Robbins like won't have actual B roll of his stuff? I mean, he's not sure. a startup. He's sure. gonna have actual B roll. Yeah, sure. look at that. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. Look at that. Yeah. It was at that place where I was just like Ah, so we go from scare to um saying some hyperbole basically is what you pointed out. Yeah. To now to almost a religious environment. To a religious environment to now let's do uh what is it? Um mirroring where you see yourself and somebody else talking because Tony Robbins is unattainable. So let's get a normal person in here to say something mm-hmm. that I can relate with. Yeah. Here, we're about to hear it. I already know how this is going to go. <laughs> it's better to die than to live like this. Stressed, overweight. I think I was almost 200 yeah. pounds. Sounds like she's kind of condoning suicide. She just said, I can't. Yeah. <laughs> seeing you being like this. There's something that has to change. I was in a. So would this be Church or Tony Robbins, do you think? Hard to well, tell. Yeah, and that's where it's really crossed the line, in my opinion. But okay, let's continue. There's a documentary on Netflix about Tony Robbins. and He's actually been accused of um, some sexual harassment stuff, too. And, and mm-hmm. really just dark place at that point. Thank God Tony ran um, a challenge at the beginning of the year. Thank God. Tony ran a challenge. <laughs> We're in a season right now we would call winter. Winter is the greatest opportunity in your life for growth because most people will let fear take over them. It's about re-engineering yourself for the season we're in so you can have the time of your life, succeed, enjoy, have great relationships, not live in fear and uncertainty. But we got to rewire. How do you destroy your future? You take no action. That's right. Fear breeds in action. Give him a hand for that. Yeah, Chris, give him a hand for that, man. Fear so, breeds in action. So, uh, I got a question for you here, and I don't know the answer, but <laughs> but the Bible says to to fear false prophets, right, or to watch for false prophets and essentially mm. fear them. So, so that's the vibes you're getting. So, would you say though that the Bible, this is what they're referencing in terms? of I'm false not a prophets? Bible person. I understand, I but just a guess, right? Because I no. Okay, neither do I, but I don't necessarily, th- I, I'm not saying it couldn't be referencing something like this, right? Where they're giving you the vibes of a religious yes. event. And- yes, and make no mistake about it, this two minutes, 24 seconds, Tony Robbins is very involved in every second of this trailer and the theme that it portrays and Unlike me and you, and we let the LICR girls do whatever the hell they want. I don't even know what they're doing. But like this, he has every every second he's controlling, okay, well, this came out. So there's like, even if he's doing it subconsciously, his ego is penetrating through mm-hmm. this trailer. And did you know from all the books he's written, his, the cover of every book is his face on it. Like just, but, there's no cover, just his face on it. Sure. But to be fair, just just in case, just to be fair, and I'm not saying you're not right, Dan, because I think you probably are, that it is ego, but it's possible it's not as well because he is the face of the product, like you just said on his books, and right. so it, whoever's handling his advertising, which probably is not him, thinks in order to sell the product, we have to just constantly, constantly be yeah. demonstrating that Tony, Tony Robbins is the thing, right? And that's what they're um, that with. getting. Yeah. yeah. So it, it may not be ego. It just may be he's the face of a product, period. It may be what's working, too. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Can't knock him for that. But um, everything, uh, when you put everything together, the it paints up another picture. It's been yeah. transformational for me. I'm so much happier today than I was six months ago. And it was all because I was strong enough to make that decision. A breakthrough challenge really allow you to be able to dig deeper. Going through a 20 challenge really transformed my life. It's time to become unshakable. This will get you the life that you want and deserve. It's time to create something new. A new quality of life. A new way of being. A new set of emotions. A new set He just spit. He's super passionate. Like the... I thought it was saliva. <laughs> and he definitely kept that in. 
purposeful. Well, you know, here's here's why I'm taking issue with it. <laughs> really, it's really he's on that threshold of a religion because, um, and, and many I knew this would be a good segment to do with you. Mo- most people say, uh, whether they're anti-religious or religious, um, that human beings are designed to have a higher purpose and a higher believing, right? Believe in something higher. Um, and when it's not religion, I forget the expression. It's, it's, if you don't uh, shoot, I don't want to, I don't want to annihilate the expression, but it's something. If you have no beliefs, you'll believe in anything. If you don't believe in something, you'll believe in anything. It's something like that. And I tend to yeah. agree with that. So you're saying these people need religion. Yeah, they need something. They need a higher belief. And these yeah. people really sound like really they're putting it in him. Right. I mean, I'm not pro religion at all. I think these people need to get to work and stop doing this kind of kind of stuff. Um maybe once, okay, I get it, like if you had a traumatic event or something and you're in a rut, of course, if this is gonna help you and if it's something that helps you every year, so be it. There are People, they show them in the documentary, like successful CEOs that continue to do his things every year. More mm-hmm. power to them, but the majority of the people doing this are not. Mm-hmm. You know, and um, I think they need to do less motivating. And if you look at all the like most popular, go to any business, go to any bookstore, go to the business section. Most of it's going to be motivational stuff, not really like technical stuff Mm -hmm. like how to do something and i know a lot of people that read and it's it's mostly like self-help books that they're reading but at the end of the day i think you need to actually do something Mm -hmm. call me old-fashioned yeah that would only make sense wouldn't it (laughs) that are beliefs that can take you to a level even better than before January 24th through 28th. I'm surprised Monica is not going to this one. She went to the other one. Yeah. Oh, you you named uh, named her. Well, in her defense, she got the tickets for free. They were a gift. Okay. So I would have gone to you if I were her. But it's a gift from somebody. Wow, um, expensive gift. I know, right? But, I mean, and yeah, you could be a fan of his. It's just, if you're watching this and you're just constantly looking for motivation, I think you just need to find that within and save money. Um, Everybody's got a passion about something. Work doesn't feel like work if you like doing it. So find something you like and figure out what you can do. Where I think something like this may serve a purpose is it helps the individuals kind of hone, maybe sharpen something that, that they have within that they haven't yeah. really figured out how to to utilize or self improvement maybe self mastery exactly exactly that's where something like this probably serves a purpose mm-hmm. but again if you're having if you, if it becomes a religion to you where it's just a time and again you're going to to this person or to many people like him then it's really you need to reflect on yourself and and really spend more time on yourself opposed to expecting results from yeah. these people. I would do something like this once a decade or so. Sure. Let's say I ran into a wall and I feel like, okay, I'm, maybe I'm missing some strategy to get to the next level. I could see myself doing this, but honestly, if I had to bet, I would still bet that I wouldn't. Um, right. And wh- I think what you're getting at is people are treating this really like a religion. Here's right? what I'm really getting at. People are treating this as the actual work, like to go oh. to this event. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I, that's I'm exactly doing what you're doing. And myself. I would agree. I'm doing this to better myself. So I'm, the work has already begun. Mm. Mm, or Not it's already really. been. Or it's already been done in its entirety by just going to this event or these events. Even worse. Yeah. Even worse. So, yeah, yeah, and we'll see this theme a lot when we do these um, charlatan things. But Andrew Tate has one we can watch. But, okay, so 
and we'll we'll do that. Um, oh, you want to do that today? Time. Or no? No, 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 not today. Yeah, there's no way we can do all this. I got to yeah. eat a peanut butter and jelly. Uh, wow, you're reading my mind over there. That's exactly what I was thinking of doing. <laughs> wow. Making it, making it, I swear to God, uh, probably a minute ago, I was thinking I need to eat a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Yeah, Just yeah. diabetic, having a little bit low blood sugar, and I think that would set me up. Right. Well, Tony right. Robbins would cure you of your diabetes, man. Yeah, no, he wouldn't. But anyhow, um, yeah, I, th I don't think necessarily these people are charlat charlatans necessarily. I think some are. I don't think Tony Robbins is. Well, I would say he's probably being that he's worth six hundred million. He's probably on the verge, especially with the the B roll there. He was showing that people are kind of treating this as though it's kind of spiritual you know, a church. Uh, yeah. well, he said his his events are spiritual events. Yeah, that's going a little too far for me. But hey, whatever. If it works for some people, I guess you know, whatever. Wouldn't be for me. It just wouldn't. Doing these things is not the same as doing the work, guys. No, it's, it's not. And you don't feel good. Jocko Willink, who's I really respect. He said, um, I don't know if it was him, but he basically says something along the lines of a true professional does things does things when he also doesn't feel like doing them. Mm -hmm. And I think these a lot of these people, not all, that go to these things, they need to always feel good to do something. The uh, majority. I would say that's true of the majority. Yeah, and I think that's where we separate the English from the Dutch. But anyways, and unfortunately, I think that's true of the majority of people for almost anything today. Yeah, they do it because it makes them feel good about themselves. And really, a lot of times it accomplishes nothing. If anything, it's it's a negative what it does for them, what they're doing. Well, luckily, there's no shortage of these self-help gurus. So we'll do another <laughs> mini series on it. I'll find yeah. more. Uh, we'll do Tate next. That's that's an interesting one. And you're yeah, right. I haven't seen it, but he had his different kind of courses and stuff. Yeah, we'll do that one. That would be interesting. Virgin eyes here, so I, but I'll look for it and then it will, will be semi virgin. Yeah, I haven't seen it either. So All right. You think of topics for a long form, I'll come up with charlatans or <laughs> Robin's not a charlatan, but um well, Depends. Depends. He's not a charlatan, in my opinion, but definitely found a lucrative little honey honey pot. Uh, Very uh, lucrative. Obviously, if he's worth six hundred million, insecurities based off of people's laziness, based off of people's um, fear, like he starts out with. Yep. All right. Like, subscribe, comment, share. Let us know what you think, guys. I, I would just like to add one thing before bye-bye. Fear is a very oh. strong motivator. I don't think there's a more Ooh. powerful motivator ever. Get me scared, yeah. It would yeah. it would it led many people to get vaccinated when they didn't need to. Yeah. Or global warming or any other number. Don't let a good uh, thing go to, go to waste. Exactly. Yeah. All right, guys. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Peanut